day. Welcome back to Art with Alison. Today I'm going to be showing basic how to mix paints. Uh, just to let you know, noises in the background are my dogs. There's lots of big Labrador dogs in here. <laughs> they do make a lot of noise. And if they're not playing, they're snoring. So please excuse that. Yeah. And okay, so to start with, the paints I'm using today are Eraldo paints. I don't know if you can get those in America or not, but we can now get these in Australia. And yeah, I'm actually quite enjoying using them. They're giving me good results, so I'm happy with them. The, so first of all, the white. The white is different. I'm mixing up white, which is actually just just has paint. British paints has paint. Oh, gee, I've got to put the lid off up here. Just fill that up. What I do, now I'm going to pause that minute while I stand on this. That'll do for now. So what I do is, because it's in such a large tin, I'll, I've just filled this up. This is a, I think this used to have fish oil tablets in it. But I just put that with 100% white paint. And in this one here, an old tomato sauce bottle, I've got white paint mixed one-to-one uh, -one with Floetrol. Floetrol is the medium that I like to use. Here and yeah, I've always enjoyed the results I get from using the flow troll. Depending on what you're painting, is what determines the ratios. So, for instance, if I'm doing a well, it even depends on the type of like I'm going to be doing. A ring pour next. If I wanted my lines to be really distinct, then I'd have it as a thicker consistency. Whereas if, say, I was going to do a, instead of so much the rings, if I was just going to be doing a straight pour, then sometimes you want the colours to mix a bit more. So that's a good reason to have it a bit thinner. By thinner, I mean adding more of the medium to your paint. Also, it depends on your paints because different paints have different densities to start with, plus they have different densities of pigment. Now, paints such as Windsor and Newton, I'll just get one of those. So like... The Windsor and Newton Galleria, I, I find a really good paint, so very good quality. And with those, I'd mix about one part paint to four or five parts flow troll to get the same result as me adding one to one with flow troll with most other paints, such as the uh, deco art paints. I'd mix those one to one. With the, um, yeah, but as I say again, <laughs> it depends what you're painting. If you want your paint to be thicker, then basically add less flow troll. Then again, maybe the flow troll is different in different countries, I don't know. From what I've seen on some videos, the flow troll seems very much thinner than we have here. Um, but then it might be different batches, I don't know. All right, so I'll do the white paint first. Now this white paint, I've put, it's about a third, about a third in this, this is an old yogurt container, I think. About a third, a bit more than a third actually, of the white paint, depending how, if I want it right to the top, but yeah, I wanted actually the white paint to be two parts flow troll to one part paint. So all right, I'll swing you around now so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so this 
also Floetrol, also it's a good idea depending when you last were using it, just to give it a few little tips up and down. You don't want to be shaking it vigorously because you don't want it filled with air bubbles. But sometimes it separates a little bit. If it's been sitting for a very, very, very long time, it actually can be quite clear on the top. But yeah, this was only just filled up not long ago, so it does certainly doesn't need that much mixing at all. So because this is a fairly, you know, it, it's already fairly liquidy. It's not as thick as, say, the Windsor & Newton. <clears throat> I'll do a Windsor & Newton for you as well so you can see the difference. But for this, I wouldn't go straight in and do the full two-thirds of Floetrol. It's a bit like when you're cooking. You usually just need to add a little bit at a time just so that it mixes better if you sometimes if you put too much in you can end up with it being not so well mixed especially as I say with these thicker paints you really have to start with a tiny bit of flow troll and add a little bit at a time otherwise it can be lumpy and it's hard to get the lumps out but because this is already fairly fluid it doesn't take nearly as long, whereas these ones do take much longer to, to mix up. It's also a good idea as you're going, just to, to check how, it's, how it is going. Now, this is already going straight down, or it's leaving a very slight trail, but not for very long at all. So it's almost how I want it already, because this is what I'm going to be using as a, as a base coat. And, yeah, so you want your, the base coat is the coat that you put on your canvas you don't always want a base coat, but a lot of the times when you're doing pours, you'll put a base coat down so that whatever you're pouring on top can move more easily over the top. Whereas if it goes straight on the canvas, it tends to kind of stick to the canvas and, and then it rolls over itself. So you're losing the pattern as you're stretching your pour. So, yeah. By having the base coat, it just helps it not to happen as much. Okay, that's lovely. I tend not to add water to most of my paints, whereas I do sometimes add water to my base coat. So I might still add a, <clears throat> a tad of water to that just before I'm about to spread it. Apparently Floetrol and, and water repel each other, so it's, if you are going to add water, it's best to do it just before you're about to use your paint because, yeah, it doesn't keep as well if you're going to have made it up prior, like sometimes you want to have it made up a a week or two even before. Now this is quite thick paint, not as thick as some. Now I'm just going to pour this in. This one, yeah, because I'm doing a, a type of ring pour I want, I want it to be two to one with the flow troll. If this was very, very thick, then you're best to add your flow troll first to go down the bottom. But as this is reasonably liquidy, it's not so important because see how it's already making cells? I just love that. The flow troll. I love flow troll because 
it makes cells all by itself. You don't need to add silicon unless you want lots and lots of cells. Yeah, sometimes when you start mixing it, you see some cells popping up, which I think is quite magical. But yeah, this is mixing in really easily. So, whereas if again, as I'm saying, if you're going to be using the the thicker, very good quality uh, artist. Uh, heavy paint then you really got to go much more slowly adding the flow troll and if you're going to have a lot of it say you've got a big container I definitely would not be putting that in first because it will just stick to the bottom <clears throat> <laughs> and you'll find it doesn't change the color of your paint if it is changing the color of your paint if your paint starts to go much paler then that means that the pigment in your paint isn't so rich and so you probably shouldn't be adding any more unless you really want it pale but so yeah that's really lovely that's leaving me a trail for a second or two it's leaving a mound Let's see if you can see this so it leaves a, a little mound and then if I move it it leaves the trail just for a second or two it runs off the Popsicle stick really easily, whereas if it was very thick, it, it would basically just be sticking to the popsicle stick and maybe going down in, in blobs, a bit like that now, but that's just because there's not much left on the stick. If it was very runny, like I'll show you the white, then it goes straight in, doesn't leave any mound and virtually no trail so it depends what consistency you're after when you're doing a pour it's important to get whatever consistency you're going for to get them all similar the only so, okay so what I mean by that is say like this is the cool blue and I'm doing the deep sea and I want to end up with it being the same consistency or as near as possible to that one and I think this is just a bit thicker to start with that's what you find even though it's the same brand see this this doesn't pour in nearly so easily so I'm going to scoop this in it's the same brand I might just add a bit of flow troll in there, just down the bottom. Um, it's the same brand and yet different in consistency already. So when people say, oh yes, just add one to one or two to one, that's a starting point, that's a guide because it's the consistency at the end that matters, not the, not the ratio, not how many grams it weighed or you know, or whether it's one part this and two parts that, etc. It's it is the end result, the consistency that matters. Whereas this one will probably need a bit more flow troll than that one to get it to the same consistency because it has started off thicker. So yeah, just to add a little bit in at a time. Stir. Also, when you're stirring, don't whip it like you would with cooking. You don't want to be putting air in. You, I'm basically going round in circles or backwards and forwards and trying not to incorporate air because we don't 
want bubbles in our painting, or at least as few as we can get. Some people leave their paint overnight and do the painting the next day, as that does help some of the bubbles to have come to the top and burst. Honestly, I don't usually have the patience or <laughs> kind of like spur of the moment, oh, let's do a painting. And unless I've got the paints already made up, I actually now have got a lot of squeeze bottles and I'm really enjoying using the squeeze bottles because not only does it make some painting easier, such as doing the, the flower dips, it's much easier to do your pattern with the squeeze bottles. Um, but also, they're readily made up. They, they keep for ages. As long as you keep the lids on, they won't dry out. And also, I do go around, if I'm not painting, about once a day, I'll just tip my squeeze bottles upside down a few times just to make sure that the paint isn't drying on the sides because you don't want dry paint flaking off into into your paint that you're going to be using. Not that that's happened yet, I've only had squeeze bottles for a few weeks and so far yeah they've not had a problem whatsoever. Still very thick. You look at that, it's it's very thick. It's too thick down the bottom still. You see it's making a huge mound. It's sort of coming off the popsicle stick in sort of waves. It's not flowing evenly. I'm leaving much too big a mound. So I'll keep going. Of course, the more the more fertile it's in it, the more you can put in each time. It's also a good idea to scrape off your stick because it's actually still quite thick on my stick there, and also scrape around the sides of your container because. That's where it can still be thick and also the bottom of the container get into those little nooks and crevices around the edges so that you don't end up with a lot that's thicker at the bottom. It does go pale to start with but then it goes dark as you've mixed it in. Or too thick. Isn't that beautiful? Better. That's nice, it's very similar to the other one. So it's making a little mound, leaves a trail for a second or two, running off the stick nicely. Good. That's those two. I'll show you a metallic. The metallics are the exception to the rule. The metallics, it's better to have them a bit thicker. Look at that, it's full of bubbles and it's just been sitting in its container. Mind you, I only got them from the post office today, so maybe they were shaken up a bit in their travels. Also, like the thicker it is, the harder it is for the bubbles to escape. Very thick, isn't it? Um, and so, as you go along and you're putting the flow troll in, that's a gorgeous colour. 
as you're putting the flow troll in, it's making the consistency thinner so the bubbles find it easier to escape. Now, yes, you're probably thinking, why didn't she put the flow troll in first? And yeah, I probably should have, but it's not a big deal. It's only a small container. It certainly would be a big deal if I was doing a big pot of it. But a little pot like this, it's easy to still get to the edges and the bottom and the sides. And mix it in. I do love metallics. I love how they shine and also they tend to work well with flow troll giving good um, effects. I'm going to have to top up my little sauce bottle here with some more flow troll. Now with the flow troll, I, I did this not long ago because I only just filled this up before I started, but it's a good idea to shake it, but like before, you don't want to be putting bubbles in it, so unless it's been sitting for a week, you don't need to sh shake it vigorously. And as I only just see, these are the little bits you can get from the flow troll, can you see that? A little, it's like it turns to glue when it dries a bit. That's why a lot of people put stockings. They'll, they'll stuck, cut up a stocking and put it over the flow troll part here. Across the opening so it catches any blobby bits. Or you could do it over this part. But, yeah, I think it's just starting to happen in this one. And I've been using this for, oh, a good four weeks. But I think it's about time I washed this out, let it dry, and then did it again. Because I shouldn't speak too soon, but I haven't been having any problems mm -hmm. with... Yeah, I'll try and show you what I'm doing. Haven't been having problems with the with that much. Now I have to do it over the edge because I've got to go down lower on the tabletop. There we are. So also a good way to stop those goopy bits is before you put your lid back on. Just give that a wipe around with a clean um, paper towel and that will help stop that from happening. And the same with this, clean that before you put the, the lid back on. It seems to be just where it starts to dry out that that happens. All right. And when you're putting the lid back on things like this, it's a good idea to make sure that it's open, otherwise you can end up with a lot of pressure building inside. Whereas this way, as you, when it's so full, when your lid's going down, the air's going to have nowhere to escape. But this way it can, it can just come out the top. All right, just pop that back. It's just because it's getting watered down a little bit with the flow troll, so the air bubbles are able to escape. So yeah, with the with the metallics, I have found it's best to to do them one to one with the flow troll rather than the two to one. You can see I'm not using weights. I yeah, I haven't got the patience for all that, I'm afraid, and, you know, I haven't been having 
too many problems with just doing it by eye. And as I say, also it's it's a feel, it's feeling what your consistency is like, feeling how thick it is, rather than exact measurements. The more you paint, the more you get into this, the, the more second nature it becomes. In the beginning everything is new and so it it's all it's all learning and it all seems much harder but once you're getting into it and you do it a lot it just becomes natural second nature you're not even really thinking about it what's going on it's a puppy um all right so yeah, that's that is thicker, but I'm happy with that. As I said, with the metallics, I might just put a little bit more in. That will be about one to one with the flow troll. That's a pretty colour. Alright, that's probably enough of that sort of mixing for your benefit. I'll, I'll just mix up a little bit of the Windsor and Newton and you can see the difference. Okay, this is, this is the Windsor and Newton Galleria Acrylic Windsor Blue. <laughs> this has actually been my favourite colour out of this lot that I've bought, actually this were a gift. Um, but you only need a tiny bit, this is only 60 mil, like 60 mil of, of the something like the, the deco art goes in no time when you're mixing it one to one. So I will just start with a tiny bit of flow troll in the bottom. What's the matter? You want to play? No one wants to play with you. It's after midnight, they should all be sleeping. Well, so should I probably, but I do like doing this at night. Alright, so you can see that's probably about as much as I'm going to put in there. If I can get it to come off. Only a tiny little bit. And then just squish it up, mix it in, squish it against the side. I probably shouldn't have put quite so much flow troll in. See how it's going lumpy? That's because it's so thick and the flow troll is much thinner. I just didn't want it to stick to the bottom. Just means you've got to do this a bit longer. So basically I'm just grabbing bits of it, squishing it against the sides. I'm sure I don't see any lumps anymore, then I'll add a bit more. I'll go control. Some empty boxes. The noise you can hear now. So you can see it's a much more tedious job mixing the thick paints, but they have far richer pigments. So you can dilute them a lot more without losing your colour. So that's pretty well mixed in now. Make 
children stuck. Well, they're because this is round and this is flat. To get the middle, you've really got to push down a bit to scrape it off. And get it off the sides. Now I can start adding more Protrol. So already that's probably about three to one. Or even four to one, considering there's only a tiny bit like that, wasn't there? And that's probably about as thick as I'd like it. Leaves a slight trail. Yeah, I don't want it any thinner than that. So it's just showing you the difference. Obviously, if I wanted more of the Windsor and Newton, I'd have put more in. But yeah, you know, I wasn't actually planning on using the Windsor and Newton. I was just doing it to show you how to mix them. So if you wanted to wait till the next day or so to before you use your paint then you don't want them to dry out because they'll start drying out on the top and you don't want that. So the best thing is to bunch them together and put a, a, a damp tea towel over the top. Obviously not wringing wet, you don't want it to be dripping water in there. Um, yeah, and that'll help just keep it moist until tomorrow. Unless you've got little containers like this, I did buy a whole heap of these and they've got lids on so these can keep for ages. This is actually, after I do a painting, the pour that's left over, I scoop it up and put it into little pots like this. This has got E-mix which means it's Araldo mixed colours. But you see it's made a lovely little pinky movie colour so I can use that in a, a bit of dry paint just came off in it what do I do with those pieces um so you know you can use that in another pour another painting yeah I think what's happened is because oh, that is still damp maybe it came off the lid if it's dried up up then they can fall in there but yeah I I yeah, I always scrape up. I've, on this particular plastic sheet here, I've probably done about four pours. And then I... Well, that's another video altogether, but there's lots of different things you can do with your pour, but once you've finished with all the... whatever you're doing, that you might, might want to be dipping cards into it or, or things to make jewellery with, or you might want to just leave it to dry and have as a skin. But if I'm not going to do that, I will scoop it up with a spoon and a popsicle stick and then pour them into these containers and really offer an ordinary pour of, say, I don't know, 40 centimetres by 30 centimetre. I've got about 300 mils of paint, which is, you know, fabulous. It's a shame just to throw it all away. And then I wipe it up with uh, paper towels and then damp paper towels until it's clean again. All right, so hopefully that's helped you. I'm going to be mixing up a few more paints, but I don't suppose you want to see me keeping going because you've seen the basics of it. So as I say before, it's the consistency that you're after not necessarily the absolute ratios. You can use the ratios as a start, like if it says one to one, then I would, you know, start off with one to one. And then I think that could actually do with a bit more it's thick still. And then adjust. And also, this is important too, before you're going to paint, like even if you've made them up 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, 
just test again and, and give it a stir for a little while. I know paints like the Liquitex Basics, they can thicken up, but then if you stir them for a little while, they, they loosen up again. But some paints simply are thicker and you then need to add either more Floetrol or a lot of people then will add a little bit of water. So, yeah, that's just giving you some ideas on mixing. Please share with me um, whether or not this has helped you, if there's anything else you'd like me to explain, if there's something I didn't explain well enough, ask me about it and I'll endeavour to get to all your questions and answer them. And also I, I have a Facebook group, a place where everyone can join in and share in conversations, share their artwork, uh, ask opinions, ask advice, give advice, so long as it's all done in a happy, friendly, respectful, kind manner. That's the only rule I have, is to be respectful and kind. So, yeah, love you to join. It's called... Acrylic pouring and more for all artists at all levels. So yeah, whatever you're doing, please join. Even if you haven't started painting yet and you just like seeing what other people are doing, you just want to see how it's done. You know, everyone's welcome. Now that, that growling is just them playing. I still think that's too thick. I'm going to have to a little bit into another container I think <laughs> all right so thanks heaps for watching and yeah I hope this has helped okay catch you later bye